How you doing? Doing well. So how's first day? It was solid. I wouldn't say it was great, but I wouldn't say it was bad. It was solid first day. Obviously we're in pajamas. So I mean it's a first day in pajamas. Changes, new, anything new this year? You're starting to incorporate here in spring? I mean I would say a little bit more unified language, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, kind of like I alluded to in my press conference the other day, but uh, offensively a little bit different. Uh, but pretty much the same defensively, some minor tweaks, but uh, you know, culture wins. I feel me believe that. the com communication level throughout practice? Uh, obviously way better than day one from last year. I don't even think it's comparable. I don't like to compare that because uh, I think it's just a low standard. Uh, but I think it was solid for a day one. I thought specifically the new guys at linebacker and safety communicated well, uh, which was a positive. Have you seen guys out here today that accomplish things in the winter transportation program that are going to help them? Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. You get you see guys that uh, in the strength and conditioning program got bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, you can see it on the tape, and or you can see it on the film during practice. And there's there's one thing to be great in the weight room. There's another thing to be able to translate that to the field. And you can give all the effort you want in the weight room if you don't study, if you don't know your plays. If you don't practice with a high intensity and a willingness to compete, then go be a workout warrior. It really doesn't matter. You got to be able to combine the two. That's why the, the game is our play. You're not one in the weight room, right? Everybody says that. That's not true. You need it to win, but they're one on the field, and you have to be able to take those skills, take that work, and apply it. Is there an excitement of just being out here for the first day as well? Oh yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's great to be back on the grass. I mean, this is why everybody coaches is to coach. You know, we get four hours, you know, between meetings and on the field that we get to actually coach football and challenge guys, make them uncomfortable, and uh, that's what I told the guys in our meeting is, you know, my job is to make you, last year I was getting to know you. This year, I know you. Now my job is to make you uncomfortable. Kenny, Kenny a, year a, ago, a year ago, you were out here on this field on day one. What's changed in your behavior from your view of where the program is? and the expectation for you. Yeah, I would say just the minimum standard. Like if you watch our guys finish today, they're running to the ball. We're not having to yell it every time. That's just what they do. That's what they, they know to do. So little things like that, that before was all you got to coach the entire practice was how do we transition? What drill are we going to next? Finishing, effort. That's kind of just happening. Now, do we have to drive it? because effort is what makes great defenses. Effort is what creates explosive plays. Yes, we have to continue to drive it, but it's not every single play that I have to run down and coach effort. We can actually coach the football a little bit more than we could last year when we were coaching purely effort and those types of cultural uh, things. Okay, what, what kind of effect or impact will it have on Jaden and the offense for him not to be uh, out here participating? Yeah, obviously it sucks for him not to be able to get reps. I mean, that's unfortunate, uh, but he's got to get as many mental reps as he can. And uh, you know, be able to be dialed in for when he does get healthy and he does return. Is there an underlying current of hey, we're moving to the Big 12? Is there a sense that guys are excited about that? I mean, I know this is the coach answer, but I really don't care. Like, line up somebody and let's play. Let's worry about us and let's get better every single day from here on. It's all in fact. I mentioned uh, some guys getting bigger, stronger, but other guys getting leaner, lighter, can't scale the right up there. Um, you, like, how do you go to figure out what guys need to do? Yeah, well, last year we didn't have explosive runs. I mean, you can, you can say we ran the ball well and, and certain games and all that stuff sounds good. Uh, college football is about explosive plays, plain and simple. If you look at the teams who win football games, they have more explosive plays than the teams that don't win football games. So what does that mean? we got to get faster when we hand the ball to people in the backfield. So uh, Scott's a really good back. I think he leaned down, which is going to increase his speed, become a little bit faster with a player with that same tenacity. And uh, that's kind of how we, we, we decided, you know, you should be a master of something. Being a master of something is valuable, right? What is that? There's some saying about that. I can't even think of the saying, you know, the master of nothing or whatever. But uh, you got to master something. So whatever you're good at, like optimize it, become a lead at it, pour into that factor and Scott is great with the ball in his hand running. What does he need to do? He needs to then separate with speed. So we, we challenge that. We already know he's gonna run people over. That's easy. Right? It's the speed. And we challenge that with all the guys is 
lean into your strengths, maximize your strengths, and then let's try to mitigate your weaknesses. But let's really play to your strengths because in football you can't. That's the thing that coaches are supposed to do, supposed to play to your strengths. So let's not hide from a, a weakness or hide from a strength. Let's just maximize your strength and we'll try to mitigate what we do on the field. And the communication, I know, obviously say it's important offensive wise with like Coach Williams and you're working this different verbiage, but for a first day, how do you feel the offense took to it? Yeah, I mean, pretty solid. I mean, we have a few more guys out and anticipated. Two guys kind of got, you know, rolled out here yesterday. So unfortunate because we're trying to two-spot practice because we needed two-spot practice for our defense to get reps. So, you know, some of the guys were tired out there today, and when you make when you get tired to make more mistakes, uh, you run lazier routes, you build bad habits. So right now, today, a little bit in the scully period, we were robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know, we were making the old offense look kind of crappy at the time. Uh, to get the rest for the defense, which is what it is. We need it. The defense side of the ball, but we got to get some guys back, uh, a few of those guys back uh, so we can get the reps. Coach, on the offensive end, like go, going throughout the offseason and evaluating the offense going into this camp, what are your um, biggest objectives and approaches on taking those steps forward to help the offense elevate to the next level this year? Yeah, I would say for us, just the effort on a consistent basis and the detail. Uh, you know, in, in the spring, in the fall, you're worried about making sure all the schemes are in and you're really dialed in. It's a big, gotta get our install in, we're about to play. Right now, you know, the, the things that win games, the things that win games are details and effort. If you do the details, you give great effort, and I think we have a talented enough ro roster to win games. So we gotta focus on those two things. Two of the receivers are not pulled out today. Uh, any sense about when that might happen for the uh, You know, Jordan Tyson will, should be back here in the next day, you know, Thursday, Saturday, somewhere there. Uh, nothing serious. Just and, uh, but yeah, we have two guys that should be back here, hopefully by Thursday, and they will help us. If not, obviously we have to be making two times. Do you have a timeline for Jaden? Is when he'll be throwing again? Uh, throwing? I don't want to give a, a timeline. I would hope that we get him back rocking by the end of spring ball, somewhere in there, at least throwing individual, not team reps, uh, but somewhere three, four weeks, five weeks, you know, hopefully the three. But uh, yeah, I don't want to come into speech. How much, how much tackling do you think we'll see this spring? A lot. Yeah. It's, it's football. You know, we have to block and tackle. It's the simplest game known to man. If you block well, if you tackle well, you're going to win a lot. If you block poorly, tackle poorly, you're going to lose a lot. So we got bigger and on offensive line, got bigger on the defensive line, we got longer in the defensive backfield by design. Length tackles well, right? More length, right? Easier to tackle. We got bigger up front to block, to disrupt blocks. And uh, that was our plan, so I'm excited to see the guys, you know, apply. Kenny, how's that depth, that offensive line, gonna open up not only the passing game, but also the running game? Well, yeah, run, play, action, football, in my opinion, uh, is what most offenses try to be. You know, you want to establish the run game, and if you can lean on people and run the football, and, and run wide zone, run counter, uh, run tight zone on people, and then play action shot up top. That's winning football, it's complimentary football, everything looks the same. Uh, really hard for a defense uh, to defend when you can do that. So everything starts up front. Uh, that's the key to the game. Like I said, blocking and tackling, everything else is, you know, everything else is great. 